We've all heard the saying, have your cake and eat it too. What does that mean when it comes to firearms? Does or will the Springfield M1A SOCOM do this? Is it going to give us our cake so we can eat it too? Let's find out. I'm Drew. Welcome back to Beyond Seclusion, where I only give you my honest opinion. Now, when I'm talking about having my cake and eat it too, in the first review video that I did, I had the Vortex Venom on here. And it was awesome at CQB distances. You know, anything up to 200... And actually, we reached out to 300 and 400, but it was getting a lot more challenging. Now, in that original video, I proposed that maybe this is an, ex uh, an exceptional hunting rifle. Okay, 308, small, light, and it was seeming to be pretty accurate. So, you know, the big question in that first review is, what can we do with an optic on this. So I got a hold of a few scout scopes and we're gonna see just what we can do on this with this. We're gonna see if, if I can bang away on the steel up there easily at 500 yards. We couldn't do that with the red dot. Now, if we can do that, then this would be an ideal brush hunting gun and perfect for hunting in thick vegetation because I can dial it all the way down to two power, which means for up close 50 yards, no problem. If I need to, if I need to reach out two, three hundred yards, no problem. The red dot, eh, yeah, we were hitting steel, but you know, you didn't have a reticle, and I don't know that I'd want to shoot at a uh, game with a red dot at three or four hundred yards. If you were going to dispute that the M1A has power, accuracy, reliability, I would even say it has acceptable recoil. In fact, in my original review, I really didn't find any difference between this and the full size version. You know, so what's the whole cake thing and eat it too? Well, can I have power, stopping power, accuracy, low recoil, small and lightweight and reliable? And, you know, coming in at nine pounds, I wouldn't necessarily call that lightweight, but compared to some of my other 308 platforms, that's going to come in lightweight. You know, there's the problem. Several of these things directly conflict with each other, such as power and light recoil or small and lightweight versus accuracy. You get the idea. And this is what we've all been looking for. The red dot was perfect for distances under 100 yards. My concern was for hunting and the longer distances. Due to its design, it really is best suited for a scout scope. I wanted to get a couple of really entry level to give a test on. Now, if we could do that, this would not only be an ideal brush hunting gun or perfect for thick vegetation, but it'd also be a hell of a steel banger. Now, if you've ever looked at scout scopes, there's not a huge selection out there. It's fairly niche optic. What I did was is I started off with Hilux and Vortex, the Crossfire 2. Both of these were coming in around 150. My thought was is, yeah, this isn't world-class glass or anything, but they're respectable. And if I can get what I want out of the optic at that price level, that says a lot. So in with the Vortex Crossfire 2 and the Hilux with the BDC reticle. Quick comparison of, of these on specs and tech. Okay, so this is not an optics review. I just simply wanted to try these two lower end sort of entry level scout scopes to see what we can do with the M1A SOCOM. I'm gonna start off with a Vortex. We'll start out there, you know, two, 300, 400 yards and see what we can do with it. Okay, so if the ammo was growing on trees like it was a little over a year ago, I just put a whole bunch on at 200, but that's too easy. It's not a challenge. So we're just gonna start at 300 here.
Okay, that's definitely easier than with the red dot. Going to go back to 400. Okay, it's the typical good quality that we've come to expect from Vortex. The only thing that I really didn't like about the reticle, the lines were a little bit too fat for me and they made it difficult when I was out there at 500 yards. I've got the Hilux on here, and actually this is what I ended up with. Let's take a look and see how this does. Okay, so I was getting that Hilux zeroed in at 100, started down here, and then I had a group over here, which is really impressive to me, considering I'm using the tool. I moved up here. It's hard to see at 100. So I put this target up here, had a couple more adjustments on it. And I'm... Guys, I'm not kidding. That is awesome at 100 yards. That's the last group that I shot with a Tula at 100 yards. Let's we'll start shooting some steel now. Okay, so that bullet drop compensator, those lines in there made it really easy at 400. It was the third line down in the center of the target. Let's just see if we can get three on there real quick and then we'll try five. Nice. Nice. Hey, I was surprised with that, to be honest. I didn't think I was going to like it. You know, it doesn't have near the solid uh, feel or quality that the Vortex does. The dial on the magnification up here, you know, it's got a little play in it, and it's kind of loose. Um, but that reticle made all the difference when I was up there on top of the hill at 500 yards. It really made it easy to make those 500 yard shots and I would prefer the small thin lines for hunting. There you have it. You decide what you think. Is the M1A SOCOM 16 a good gun for hunting and moderate steel banging? I think so. I also like the Hilux, much to my surprise. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to educate our young people on firearms and safety. Till next time, happy shooting and be safe.